everybody, we've got some bacon to do this morning. I'm gonna do three loaves of sourdough and I'm gonna do some scores on each of those just to kind of show you some different ideas. I thought I would just like bring you through the process. We'll score them up, we'll bake them, we'll see what we get. Okay, I'm gonna go grab the loaves. Okay, I've got my gloves ready, my blade, some white rice flour, and a little brush. Now that everything is set up here, oh, I've got my parchment paper. I'm having to reuse parchment paper. This is stuff that I just found around uh, because I don't want to go to the grocery store right now. And so we're just going to see how this goes with me repurposing some parchment. But I'm going to go get my loaf out of the refrigerator and get my kettle out of the oven. I want to have everything ready. Okay. This is our beginner loaf. All right. Now we want to get Ideally, you have a new piece of parchment paper, but put your parchment paper over the top, flip it out. You're gonna wanna work fast. I've got my Dutch oven here off camera, ready to go. The lid is on. I'd like to brush the old stuff off and sprinkle some new on. If I'm gonna be using rice flour, or if I'm gonna be using any kind of rice flour at all. Sometimes I don't put any rice flour on it, I just want it to be natural. Okay, so you basically want to put your blade in, um, get it in at least a half an, or a quarter inch to a half an inch. Not too deep now, um, because you don't wanna completely splay your loaf open, but we'll just do a center cross and then some decor decorations on the side. Some people mark this out with floss or wire, I just might ball it. Ideally, you want to cut through the dough and not drag it along. So that's just a cross. And then I just like to do side cuts. So again, we'll do one down the center here, and then side. And then one down the center here. You can see the first one we did is starting to open up. Now, resist the temptation to kind of go in and like really cut deeper in on these first slot, uh, first cuts. Sometimes I do, I'm not supposed to. You're not supposed to either, but sometimes it's just tempting because you don't think it's cut deep enough. And in our situation here, that was what happened. I didn't think it was cut deep enough. Resist the temptation to go in there and just like, keep cutting at it. Now we're just gonna transfer this over to the Dutch oven without like squishing it too much. Okay, that's how it's looking there. The lid goes on, and I'm going to open the oven door, pop it in. Okay, so what this linen does is this is real damp. I've brushed it off as much as it's going to like get clean, um, and it. There's no smell to it or anything. There's absolutely no mold on here, and I use this over and over and over again. Uh, but what the linen does is that it acts as a nice moisture wick off of that dough. Because remember, there's a lot of moisture in your dough. It's got a high hydration. And so this just wicks that moisture off. And then you don't have to use a linen liner. You could just use this and then just sprinkle this with your rice flour, your all-purpose flour, and then put your dough in here and then put it in the fridge. Um, and then when you turn this out onto your parchment paper, it's gonna, your dough is gonna have those beautiful in, you know, rings. If you've ever seen those sourdoughs that have those gorgeous rings around them, it's from these. So that's another option. Okay, it's been 20 minutes. I just took the lid off. You can kind of see what's going on in there. I'm gonna to toss some ice cubes on the bottom pan here. You certainly don't need to do that, but sometimes it helps with your crust. I baked it another 15 minutes. And that's what we got. So I'm gonna pull this out of the kettle and uh, get it onto a wire rack and then put my kettle back in the oven and we're gonna bake the next one. Okay, next. I was thinking we could do just a one. No rice flour and just a slash. 
So again, I'm reusing this parchment paper. That's why it's wrinkled. <laughs> All right, we flip it upside down. I've got my kettle out. It's right over there. I'm gonna brush off the old rice flour that it's been sitting in for a couple days. And Drag, but there we go. Now that one's gonna bake up just pretty much brown, and we'll get some white probably in the crumb part. Get those in your kettle. Try to readjust yourself when you need to on that. Okay, it's been 20 minutes, and I just took the lid off. Gonna go. I'm gonna set my timer for 10 minutes and see where we are for color. Okay, it's just been a few minutes. Whoa, whoa, steamy. Um, I knew that that ear in here, that ridge, was gonna burn out a little bit if I just left it completely uncovered, so I tinted this with foil. Okay, I just took this out of the oven and it went for 10 more minutes and then I browned it up for about another two. Hey, beautiful. I need to change this razor blade. I've used it a few times and it's it's gotten dull. Okay, so I did a slash here and I'm just gonna go in do a little decoration over here. Now I'm not trying to shape leaves here, but I'm just making lines as, as kind of far as I can tell. And then this is how it happens every time. And then when it bakes out, it kind of bakes out almost like a little swirly leaf as you'll see in here in a second. Wow, that kettle is hot. I know you can see it, but this is always tricky. I actually dropped that in the kettle. My paper ran through but I swirled it around. You got it. I got it. Okay, it's been about 23 minutes. I got tied up with something. I just took the lid off. These are intermediate loaf. Oh my gosh. Looking really good. I'm gonna toss some ice cubes in there. Again, that's an optional step. Okay, this is seven minutes. Steam. I'm gonna tent that. I don't want that ear to get any blacker, uh, but it needs to bake a few more minutes, so I need to tent it. All right, just took this out. I gave it another about eight minutes. Pretty good. Not sure we got as much spring on this as I was hoping for, but we'll cut into it and see what we have. Okay, well, we're all done. A um, couple things happened. <laughs> so these are, first of all, these two here are my, this, this is my beginner recipe. And um, they baked up really good. Remember, this is the one that we didn't do any of the rice flour on. And we just did a single slash. And we got good spring and we got some nice blisters. I wanted to show you something on this loaf though, which is particular. Um, so you know I use parchment paper with baking because um, I'm afraid of getting burned. And there are a lot of bakers out there who don't use any parchment paper. They just like get that loaf into the hot kettle with their hands or with um, oven gloves. And I don't wanna do that. And so it's a personal choice. The downside to using parchment paper is sometimes you get these dents you see that dent? Can you tell? Now, there are some sourdough people that would drive them crazy. They do not want a dent in their bread. 
here's another one. Um, I'm willing to live with that and not get burned. All right. They probably don't get burned. I'm just more comes in there. Okay, so this is the one that I went back in and I redid, like I cut a little bit more across the center. I'm kind of glad I did because I got a little bit better spring on that. And this is a good one, looks good. So the intermediate loft that we did the rubad method on and then we also did those coil folds. After I scored it and I got it into the kettle, I don't know if you heard it, but um, I dropped it. I dropped it into the kettle. The I'm re, I was reusing parchment paper because I was out and I didn't want to go to the grocery store for like a So um, I was trying to reuse parchment paper, but that can get brittle. And that's what happened. A piece of the parchment paper when I was bringing it over totally ripped off and the loaf just went and so it dropped like 10 inches or so and it flattened and I thought it was going to bake up okay and it, it baked up decently it was beautiful actually um got a great ear on that look how flat it is I didn't get the spring I really wanted now it's still a good loaf of bread this was going to be a gift though but um, we'll just see how it cuts open though. Hopefully the crumb is good. But anyway, that stuff happens, you know? Yeah, I'm, I'm really peeved about it, actually. <laughs> but um, that's what happens, I guess. All right, so I'm gonna cut into this. And we'll see what kind of crumb we get. This is my beginner loaf. The outside is really flaky, and um, that was the deal with the ice cubes. Uh, I've just been learning to, this is totally an optional thing. It's really not part of the recipe. I think in my beginner video, you actually do see a little tray and you're pouring, ice, uh, pouring water into a tray. Now, I didn't start off doing that um, way back in the day when I started baking sourdough, but it's something I've just been kind of coming to into doing, is doing a little more steam. So as soon as I take the lid off, um, I'll go ahead and toss a few ice cubes into a, like a little cake pan or something in the bottom. Don't use a glass pan, it'll break as soon as you hit those ice cubes hit a 500 degree or 475 degree glass pan, it's gonna break, so don't use glass. But anyway, I think the result with that is just a nice flaky crumb and um, kind of a really nice texture. But don't worry about it. If you don't, if you don't have a pan or you forget, it's fine. It's really not like a big thing. Okay. This is my other, the other beginner loaf. Again, it feels a little different to me when I'm cutting it because I think because of those the extra steam. Let's go look. Come on now. Smells really good. Very, very flaky, crunchy. It's delicious. It's delicious. Um, this one needs to cool off a little bit, the flatty. Okay, let's go ahead and cut this open. It's still a little warm, but it's not like it could get worse. <laughs> um, I also just wanted to mention this is the bee wrap. I mentioned um, some bee wrap in an FAQ that I did earlier today. And so if you want more information about that, you can go ahead over and check it out. But this is the bee wrap that I like to cover my sourdough in. If I have it. All right. So, this guy cut open. Yeah, darn it. I wish this would have worked because it would have gotten. This is beautiful crumb. do it again. I mean, I've, I've made this loaf a lot, but um, it smells delightful. Uh, very, really, like really nutty. And it's, it's a beautiful loaf. Uh, again, Tim Passmore. And um, you can find him over on Instagram. Sourdough Tim. I think it is. Okay. I hope that helps you guys. Have a great afternoon.